So it seems history might be repeating itself on Wall Street. That's according to Ryan Grimm's latest piece for The Intercept. So of course, back in 2008, we had the housing-driven financial crisis. Now there may be a real estate loan crisis um, that a whistleblower is now raising red flags about, Emily. Yeah, these loans. Uh, joining us to explain what's going on in D.C. Bureau Chief at The Intercept, Ryan Grimm, and his whistleblower source for the story, John Flynn. Welcome to both of you. Great to have you both, guys. You now, Ryan, can you start you. just by walking us through this mammoth report? It's so detailed and intricate and long and so important also. So if you can just kind of break it down for us, that would be fantastic. It, it goes into detail of a couple of particular loans in order to tell the, the broad story that, that John Flynn and also some, uh, some researchers at the University of Texas have now you know, in, independently uncovered. If you go back to the original financial crisis of, two, of 2008, what was going on is that brokers and banks were basically instructing the, the borrowers uh, to inflate their income. Now, th th this is where the liar's loans came from. Say, hey, you can just state whatever you want to put as your income on this document. You can claim you make $300,000. And then as a result of that, you know, we can give you a $800,000 mortgage and we can give it to you at a nice low interest rate. And everything's fine as long as the market keeps rising. So that was the uh, that was the residential that was th those were residential MBS. So they were packaged into securities. Uh, they they were they were they were sold to pension funds and other investors who were then duped into into buying these mortgage backed securities, thinking that they were actually legitimate and that that person actually did make three hundred thousand dollars, as they said on the underlying paperwork. Nobody went to uh, pr prison for that. And so here we are 10 years later, the Wall Street has moved on to the uh, commercial MBS market. And they're effectively in many cases, as, as John and others have found, they're, they're doing a very similar thing. If you, if you look at underlying documents, you will see that under certain records, a, 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 real, a retailer, let's say it's Dollar General, we zero in on Dollar General in this story, uh, you know, claims a certain income per month on the records. But then if you look at a different set of records, which uh, John, John and these researchers were able to find, you see that as they're applying for this loan, they're, they're claiming a different and almost universally higher and significantly higher income per month. And what that does is it allows the lender to say, okay, well, you're a much stronger borrower. So we're going to give you a lower interest rate. And you know this, this type of fraud, if it is un uncovered to be fraud in the end, is is great for everybody involved and there's almost nobody to, the, around who who's harmed by it as long as the uh, as as long as you know, prices keep going up as long as real as long as the economy keeps booming as long as the music is playing everybody wins except of course people who aren't benefiting uh, from these these lower rents Let, let's say dollar general is getting lower rents that means they're able to charge lower prices for their products and if you're a mom and pop nearby that is dealing with a bank that's actually asking you to state your income accurately you're going to be at an unfair competitive disadvantage against them so let me just restate the the problem here to make sure i understand and make sure to lay it out for the audience and john you can tell me if i'm getting this wrong so back in 2008 basically what we had was uh homeowners were being encouraged to overstate their income. They were essentially be t being taken for a ride by these banks. They would get a mortgage for a house that really was wildly outside of what their income would justify. Those mortgages were then bundled up in these complicated financial in instruments that were stamped as like grade A, fantastic investments by the financial industry. And an entire house of cards was built up from you know the ground level interactions with the homeowners. Now you have a very similar dynamic taking place, except it's overstating the business income on which these commercial mortgages are based. And then they're again being picked up into these complex financial instruments and spread throughout the financial industry. First of all, do I have that correct? And second of all, I'm really curious what for you was sort of the red flag that you started to dig into what was really going on here. Sure, um, it's it's you're right, but the difference is that um, the borrowers are not overstating the income; it's the lenders that are overstating the income. Mm. Um, borrowers are not privy to the loan sale, so they do not often even see 
what um, uh, uh, what income the lenders are representing for their properties. Um, so, you know, totally unbeknownst to the borrower. And um, it's a trap almost for the borrowers because uh, uh, because, of course, when you inflate the income, there's a higher probability of default because, you know, the, the cash flow will go down. Well, it, it, it never occurred and never was there. So um, the default probability is higher. And when they default, the borrowers often say, well, you know, I didn't inflate the income. And uh, uh, so, you know, they're at a loss for explanation. And so then they're foreclosed upon. Um, as far as what brought me to the, um, uh, uh, to the realization they were doing this, um, back in 2008, I worked for the rating agencies. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of bad loans go across my desk. Um, and uh, they were magically refinanced um, uh, during the 2015, you know, 2013, 14, 15 era uh, to 2018. And, um, you know, I, I thought, well, how the hell did they get those refinanced? And I, you know, started looking and I, uh, uh, it was very difficult to dig up these records, but, you know, it, it, I got my hands on them. And um, yes, like Ryan said, universally, um, the inflate, the cash flows were inflated and the incomes for residential mortgages uh, drive credit rating. Right. And cash flows for commercial mortgages drive credit rating. So, you know, those are the um, uh, the credit drivers that, you know, lenders focus on to inflate the credit quality and lower the interest rates for um, uh, uh, for the loans. And so just to, to clarify, the allegation here is basically that the banks themselves are inflating the cash flows that these businesses are actually receiving in order to be able to get a bit better price for themselves when they resell the mortgages. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so Ryan, what can be done about this? I mean, here's the question, is any of this illegal? And if it's not, as I'm suspecting, it probably isn't, what can be done? Is there an appetite in this Democratic administration and Democratic controlled Congress to do something that would possibly control what we're seeing happening if any of it is already not illegal? You can't willfully misstate the the earnings of an underlying property in, in, in order uh, in order to you know benefit your own financial position, so that that actually would be a a violation, and it's it's going it's now going to be up to you know both the SEC and the DOJ to look into whether or not this was this was willful or this is just uh, you know a, a bunch of different coincidences all piled on top of each other. One thing that people uh, look for in determining whether or not this was uh, purposeful is the, is the direction of the mistakes. You know if if you're just sloppy at your paperwork and your the 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 income that you list for 2016 is different in one folder than it is in a different folder, you'd expect the errors to be in both directions. Sometimes you would accidentally, uh, you know, uh, pencil whip it lower. Sometimes you'd accidentally uh, whip it whip it higher. Uh, what what John found in his research is that you know almost all of the time when there is an error. Uh, it is, you know, o over 90 percent of the time it is inflating it. And so you, you then have to back up and say, OK, statistically, what what are the probabilities that you're going to always make a mistake that just so happens to benefit you? And then, of course, beyond that, there's subpoena power that can that can go in and 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 find documents that suggest whether or not this was done on purpose. And there, there are the old fashioned investigative techniques of of talking to the people at the at the lowest levels, you know, who have kind of the the least to lose uh, by by rolling over on the on the people above them. You know, the in, investigators know how to roll up, you know, racketeering schemes. Like th this this is not a, this is not a new thing to them. So, uh, you know, they do have the the ability to look into this and and uh, and determine whether or not something went wrong. John, you know, more or less, you know, did this on his own. These other uh, you know, these these University of Texas researchers were, were able to find similar things, you know, probably with a team of some undergraduate researchers. It was very it was laborious work. And John can tell you more about it because they it, it appears that they were concealing the, the different files to make it to make it much harder to figure out which property, uh, you know, is is being mis misclassified in, in the new document. But this isn't this certainly is not above the SEC or the FBI. 
Yeah, John, you want to talk about, about that piece, about how it appeared that they were concealing the records, which is part of what made it so hard for this to come to light? Yeah, there's a number of patterns in the data when you look at it as a whole. Um, the main one that I come across is when um, either a name or building address is changed. Um, uh, it thwarts the ability of an investor to understand that they're handling billions of dollars and billions of these um, uh, mortgages, right? So they don't have the ability to drill down. And the big data feeds that, uh, uh, they're, that they're given um, they don't include the comparable data. So, and the comparable data is only available by digging um, and digging. Um, and when you are not certain that uh, uh, another building is the same building, well, you don't have the confidence to compare that. So yeah, that's, that's one aspect that is um, very telltale and very re revealing um, that uh, cash flow is inflated. Um, uh, when they change the name and address. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I think it's important to underscore, we're not talking about one-offs here. We're talking about potential systematic fraud of the scale of what we saw leading up to the housing financial crisis in 2008. And as Ryan said, John, basically everything continues to grow and grow and grow and is okay for everybody yeah. until the music stops. Well, the music stopped for a lot of businesses last year who saw their cash flows plummet due to the pandemic, no fault of their own. Um, what does the fallout from this potentially look like? Uh, there's a number of legal angles that are underway right now um, that I can't go into. Um, but yeah, I mean, part of it is, you know, Wall Street has so many law firms that are knowledgeable in this stuff uh, that they're uh, uh, that it's difficult, number one, to find a law firm that's not um, uh, conflicted to um, uh, pursue some of these legal angles. That's the first chore, right? Um, so and um, uh, uh, and and yeah, so that's that's the first chore. Um, but the the thing that really um, well, COVID, of course, when when cash flows are going well, you know, coupons are being paid, interest interests are interest is being paid. No one cares basically. Um, but when cash flows decline, that's when you know the sins start being be uh, uh, becoming revealed, um, and the fallout will be more foreclosures on borrowers on uh, 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 you know their cash flows are inflated. Um, the courts will be jammed with more foreclosure cases um, and more concentration of wealth as uh, borrowers' assets are taken um, and um, uh, uh, foreclosed and, and flipped to um, uh, private equity-owned servicers, et cetera. So it's, it contributes to the um, further concentration of wealth. Yeah, further concentration of wealth, further monopoly power, decimation of local streetscapes yeah. um, and, and towns. Uh, guys, so such an important story. Thank you so much for bringing it down for us in a way that's really understandable. Appreciate you both. Got it. Thank you. Great reporting. We'll have more rising after this.